come away saying as much. The report card also importantly highlights the challenges facing the economy in an attempt to sketch out the areas where the FM intends to focus in her budget speech so as to ensure that India remains on the glide path to growth. So let me very quickly run you through some of the highlights of the budget today, viewers. Uh, the budget, the budget, <coughs> the pre-budget exercise, which is called the economic survey, excuse me, the survey projects that the Indian economy will grow at about 6.5% to about 7% for FY25 in line with global estimates, global queues, inflation management, retail inflation dipped to about 5.4% in FY24, down from 6.7% in FY23, so the curve is downwards. Yes, there is retail investment, uh, inflation in food which needs to be looked at, so that has also been flagged. Foreign direct investment, resilient FDI, despite uh, slight decline to about 45.8 billion in FY24 from 47.6 billion in FY23. Sectoral growth, services sector grew by about 7.6% in FY24. Agriculture expanded by 4.18% in five years. Manufacturing industrial growth at 9.5% in FY24. Manufacturing sector rebound after legacy of bad loans. I'm not saying it, but this is what the Report says very clearly, renewable energy sector to attract investments worth 30.5 lakh crore by 2030. So that's the upside. The challenge is the economy needs to generate about 78.5 lakh jobs every year, 80 lakhs, let's round that figure off. Every year, skill deficit in Indian workforce hampering growth. One in two graduates are not readily employable out of college. Slowdown of hyper-globalization impacting industrial growth global supply chain disruptions behind rise in food prices, need for greater private sector investment, infrastructure sector, balancing energy security with transition to renewable growth, mapping job displacement due to the rise of artificial intelligence. All of this viewers, on your screens are some of the challenges. Let's open this up. Let's ask some basic questions. Net, 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 net viewers, net, net, it looks like the government has done a job, has done a good job. Mr. Mishra, let me bring you in. Saket Mishra, of course, uh, you're an economist. You also contested the recent elections. Uh, tell us a little bit about why you believe the government has done a fairly decent job, post-COVID specifically, to steer clear some of the icebergs that were looming. Uh, thank you. I think the biggest thing is that the government has been able to continue fiscal consolidation, which means that they did not go headlong into spending here and there, kept some money, some powder dry. And as and when we came out of COVID, they had the money to spend, which was required uh, for getting the economy back in shape. Therefore, public investment came in and actually did the job that absence of private sector investment due to overcapacity was, uh, was not able to do at the time. That has brought the economy back to a level where uh, we are at pre-COVID levels. It's also done very well in terms of helping the poorer parts of the country uh, actually cope with the post-COVID crisis where people were unemployed, people didn't have enough to eat. So that support has been given. The third is that the government is continually retooling uh, the manner in which uh, the economy works. So making it more efficient, changing rules, uh, making it easier to do business. So overall, they've set up a good platform uh, uh, for growth to take place. And as uh, the economic survey shows, there is a there's a lot of green shoot that's that's visible. Private sector investment is coming back. Okay. Uh, we are seeing stock markets remaining up. We are seeing continued interest from foreign uh, investors who are just ready to come in uh, into the country. So overall, I think they've set the platform for actual growth for the next five years. So let me ask you, why did we see so many reversals in this election? A large number of people, like for example, Dr. Mehrotra will tell you that there is rural distress, uh, there's joblessness, especially amongst the youth. And I think the, uh, the report card also flags this, that there is a problem when it comes to youth. And most of the growth that has taken place, the job growth that has taken place, has taken place in the self-employed sort of bracket, not so much in factory, et cetera, et cetera, which is problematic because that the quality of jobs, therefore, is not what is thought to be uh, very generating productivity. So 
how come we missed that boat? I mean, I'd, I'd sort of separate elections, which are much more complex. No, I'm just saying that the elections but I think, threw uh, up a problem. Of course, and, and I think there is an issue, which is that the rural sector is not getting the kind of returns uh, on their effort, on their hard work that, that they believe they should get and that I believe that they should get. And in the speed of change that's happening in India, we obviously need to do much more for the rural sector. Okay. Having said that, there is the real issue is that we need India being a complex country. You need to no, manage the that, large... No, hang on. The reason that didn't happen 10 years is now a fairly long period of time in office. So 10 years that didn't happen, is it because specifically because the government does focus in the same areas where there has been a problem? So on the same people where there is a problem. So I'm going to ask you, is it because Demo wrecked the economy? Is it because, as the opposition says, the GST uh, is too complicated, too draconian? They call it the Gubbar Singh tax. Certain missteps, would you accept them? Well, I, for one, believe that GST is one of the best things that's happened to the country. Uh, it has harmonized taxes across the country. Uh, and as we are seeing in the GST numbers, which are rising okay. continually, uh, clearly compliance has become easier. As with any reform, there is obviously some time required for change. Demo? Uh, Demo, I think, has had mixed results. Uh, in some cases, perhaps due to lack of okay. uh, all institutions playing ball. Uh, okay, well, at least you're being honest. At least you're being honest. There is a problem. We've identified the problem in the studio. Santosh Mehrotra, what can be done? Dr. Mehrotra, what can be done? The budget tomorrow, yes, there might be certain outlays certain amount of spends, etc., will they go far enough? Or is there a bigger problem? Rahul, there's a big, big pr problem. And I think that problem essentially still remains manufacturing. Because if you look at what is the situation in respect of manufacturing contribution to GVA, we're still at 14%. Yes. Okay, I think we've lost you 14% GVA, which is a fairly good marker. Uh, if I'm not getting you back, I'll bring Dr. Ranganathan into this conversation. Dr. Ranganathan, some, obviously, some missteps, some challenges, but overall, do you think uh, Modinomics has scored a distinction? Yes. Uh, and uh, Rahul, I must say that at the outset that whatever numbers I'm going to say, one of your panelists is not going to believe them. <laughs> but uh, uh, and um, uh, I think that person just went out of uh, the phone connection. But in any case, uh, as far as manufacturing is concerned, the PMI index has been the highest for 16 years. Now, as I said, people might not believe these numbers like people may not believe the fact that in the last 10 years, 125 million jobs were created. That's the RBI that's saying it. In the last year, 46 million new employment jobs and opportunities have been created. That's again the RBI saying it. Uh, our GDP per capita has shot from 1,500 in 2014 to 2,500 now. There are so many other figures like that. But the objective right now is not to rattle out these figures. That does indeed tell, show and prove that we are moving in the right direction. Of course we are. My issue is something else. My issue is the pace at which we are moving. And here is what I want to spend the next couple of minutes, if you please bear with me, because I think it's very important. My problem is with the pace because I believe that Narendra Modi is blessed. And I'll tell you why. Because all the toughest decisions that he has to take in national interest, and he doesn't take them, the opposition supports him. That is the reason why we are having a sluggish pace and that is the reason why we will fall behind. Let me give you a couple of examples. 44% of our active labor force of 585 million people is involved in agriculture. Mm. From production to purchase, the entire chain is archaic. It contributes only 14.5% to our GDP. Now the three reforms that Modi was going to brought in indeed did bring in. You know what happened? The opposition that had promised those very reforms took a U-turn. Yeah. So unless we go for these big ticket reforms, I'm afraid our pace is going to be sluggish. Another example, other than Air India, there has been zero privatization. 
Modi hasn't privatized anything, but who supports him in that? Who opposes privatization? Like the people who oppose the farm reforms, the opposition. So he doesn't have to do anything. But the fact of the matter out here is very important. Yes, we are progressing. Yes, in 2014, we had 3,000 startups. Today, we have 120,000 startups, unprecedented. Of course, privatization, private entrepreneurship has been given a push. But I ask you again, the most important question that every Indian, you, me, everyone has to ask is this. What is the distinction between welfare and freebie? Hmm. Rahul, I support welfare. If welfare wasn't there, if Modi hadn't made 120 million toilets, given 100 million gas connections, given 350 million Ayushman cards, tens of millions of Indians would have been wiped out. But the fact of the matter is, what is freebie? And that is what we are not making that distinction and opposition doesn't want to make that distinction. So Maharashtra that has a debt of 8 lakh crores, Karnataka that has a debt of 5.5 lakh crores, Tamil Nadu that has a debt of 5 lakh crores are giving these freebies as if there is no tomorrow. The BJP is emulating the Congress. The BJP now says eligible women between 21 to 16 Maharashtra will all get 1500 rupees per month. They are bankrupting the state as if they believe we are America that can mount a debt of 36 trillion dollars. Okay. We are not America. Sooner or later, somebody has to pay for it. And you know who will pay for it? All those corporates that have now been set up. Their tax will go up and sooner or later, they will have to shell out because this is a cycle. Dr. Mehrotra, Dr. Ranganathan says that, look, the reforms that Modi needs to take are being opposed by the opposition. That's the real problem here. That's the real problem. I hope you can hear me. I can hear you loud and clear, sir. Yeah, please go I ahead. Wish, uh, someone, I, I wish someone like uh, Dr. Raghunathan would care to look at uh, the Unorganized Enterprises Survey to try and understand what has actually happened with the unorganized sector ever since demonetization. I was, I was glad to hear, Rahul, that you, you made a point of it. As far as startups are concerned, they have been closing left, right and center, and they don't create many jobs. As far as the RBI is concerned, another claim that has been going about, it is a bit of a laughable claim and it is repeated in the, uh, the, in the economic survey, because RBI puts out no data, it collects no data. This is simply a research project funded by RBI, done by outsiders, and RBI has put the data out. What is regrettable is that the RBI, so what, has, what it has put out, it has actually not done justice to PLFS, despite the fact that it is supposed to be relying on the PLFS. So there is a very serious problem with agriculture. You put your finger on it. 45% of the workforce is working there. In 2019, just before COVID, that was only 42%. So it is this government which has pushed people back on agriculture. That's the source of the problem. If you want to agriculture to thrive, please put in public investment in agriculture. And please do something about urban employment because that will create urban infrastructure, okay. improve the lives of city dwellers and pull workers out of agriculture. Okay. 60 million people have been added, Rahul, to agriculture thanks to this pol government's policies okay. in the last three years. Okay, so, so viewers, tomorrow, I don't know how much elbow room Nirmila Sitaraman will have. How much can a budget actually do to address these issues? Let's look at tomorrow's exercise and see if she's ticked some of those boxes. There are concerns, of course, yes. Mr. Uh, Saket Mishra. There are these problems. Uh, Dr. Ranganathan has, of course, looked at it from another point of view, from the political economy point of view. Let's hope that we can all come together. If tomorrow there is a blueprint that is announced, let's see if the opposition also carries uh, its conviction on its sleeve and uh, works with the government to implement it. We'll have to see, viewers, tomorrow will be the big day and we will be live from 8 in the morning with all our experts. Don't go anywhere. Stick to us. The Right Stand coming up with uh, Nudsiman, Anand Nudsiman.